I can't believe that this is actually happening. I lived in California for the past four years since 2020. I've been going back and forth whether or not I should move to Colorado to go to school or just stay here and be in my comfort zone. I mean, the weather is really perfect here. I love it but there's just way more opportunity for me in Colorado. So I'm definitely going there. I'm super excited, super stoked. Today, before I start this journey, I'm gonna say goodbye to the Pacific Ocean one last time by going in for a cold swim. And I'm not gonna see it for a while, but man, this is gonna be really cold. Oh my gosh, that water is so cold. I gotta go warm up. Now it's time to go to Vegas. The day has come to say goodbye for now to Santa Barbara, a place filled with countless fun and loving memories that will always hold a special place in my heart. Leaving this paradise with its amazing friends, family, and endless things to do is bittersweet. Santa Barbara has been a chapter of self-discovery and growth. And while it's hard to leave, I'm excited to continue this journey in Colorado carrying with me everything I've learned here. This is my last California dinner for a while, so I'm gonna enjoy it. It's too early for this. I'm going to reconnect with my good friend Brandon, who's been a part of our adventures on this channel before. We're in for a few hot but fun days out in the desert. Ready for this interview? Yeah. Just making sure everything's perfect. Setting up the, the chair. We've got our natural light coming from this window. Two camera angles. Got to set up the first camera. Talk about uh, some of your reasons why you chose to get involved, you know, more civically after your service. So, you know, it's interesting because once you leave service, uh, you have all your friends, all your friends are in this one area. You have this great big purpose for your service. Um, every, every time you go somewhere, someone says, thank you for your service. And it feels great. You get the discount, you get all the stuff. And then when you leave service, you just, you feel that absence of purpose and you feel like what you're doing. If you go work a regular job, you feel like what you're doing is not as important. So, you know, people don't necessarily understand when you swear an oath to the Constitution to preserve and protect it, there's not necessarily an expiration on that. You always feel that in your heart. And and uh, as I explained it to a friend the other day, I said, the, the passion doesn't go away. And you, you wrangle with, you wrangle and wrestle with what your next steps are gonna be. And for me, it was just natural civic engagement. As veterans, we're at the forefront uh, of fighting for our country and fighting to preserve the rights in our democracy. So we are more astute to understanding what the cost of that is. So Brandon, how did that interview go? Dude, it went really good. We got Levi Schultz, big democratic leader, big civic activist, um, and really awesome Navy veteran. He told us his thoughts about civic engagement, and um, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Like he, he, he crushed it. Um, and not because he like said everything nice, he crushed it because he, he said the truth, uh, the truth of a lot of veterans who, you know, from all political spectrums, uh, who are really just tired of the nonsense, tired of the, the partisan divide, and just wanna get to basics, just wanna get to better democracy, just wanna get to uh, everybody understanding how important this democratic game is um, in terms of protecting our democracy. Doesn't matter what party you're from, um, there's some common ground here that everybody can agree on and Levi Schultz is one of those guys who gets it. He gets it. So yeah, they're going great. I'm not doing as well as he did in the interviews, but hey, we can roll again. Yeah. And yeah, he was just a really cool dude, really well-spoken, really great communicator. Most of you guys probably have no idea who this is. It's, this is Brandon. This is my friend. We've had many adventures out in the desert. We're in a completely different setting 
we're in Las Vegas. We're here to have fun. We just got finished done with this interview, but we're here to have fun. We're gonna have a good time. What are we gonna do? We're gonna wrap this up and go have some fun. Well, we don't know yet, but you guys are gonna find out in a second. We walk into this white cafe, and this guy is, look at the nostalgic eyes. <laughs> wow. wow. Look at this. I have 20 bucks. Watch us actually win. <laughs> we just won 10 bucks off a $3 spin. Two. Nothing? Wait, try to crank it. Try to use the, yeah, there you go. Try it again. The damn thing doesn't work. What the hell, I want my money back. Oh, there you go. Oh my God, it was so close. Like one more, what? like one more. We would have gotten it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Now, dude. Okay. Oh. Oh. Together, together, as one. As one. As one, two, three. Doesn't matter. Damn it. <laughs> Vegas doesn't care about your feelings. No, it doesn't. Fremont Street on a Saturday night was intense. Definitely the most nerve-wracking street I've ever been on. The sheer number of people made it feel chaotic, like I had zero control if anything went down. I was on edge the entire time, trying to navigate through the crowd. Yeah. 
After an epic time in Las Vegas, I hit the road expecting an easy drive to Cedar City for some cooler weather and a quick rest stop at Walmart. But what happened next turned a routine trip into something completely unexpected and downright crazy. Okay, low key, freaking out right now. I'm in Utah. I pulled off the highway and this person was following me for like 20 minutes. There was like a white, a white sports car um, just following me. I made like four different left turns, went left, 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 left. This person was still following me and just really freaking me out. So I pulled into a Walmart parking lot, um, just uh, thinking that it might've been some kind of coincidence. And then this old lady in the sports car pulls up next to me on my right side and she's just looking at me. This lady is looking at me with the creepiest dead stare that I have ever seen. And it just really freaked me out. So I went straight to the police station. And as soon as I got there, she just pulled off and left me alone. Um, really scary, kind of rattled. I uh, tried going to the police there cars were running but no one was in there all the doors were locked there was no bell service i called dispatch and they said they couldn't really do anything because the person pulled off so if it happens again i'm just gonna call dispatch right away and hopefully they can send a car or something out here i've never had that happen to me i've never had anyone follow me like that it was just it just felt very violating i don't know if this is a regular occurrence but it's definitely freaking me out <laughs> i don't know what this is i tried seeing if i can sleep at this hospital over here but they said they don't allow parking i wanted he recommended the loves or the walmart but the walmart parking lot is the one that i went to and then that lady parked up next to me really weird i did not i i still don't feel safe i don't feel safe i let a couple different people know where I'm at. I'm sharing my location. So it's, yeah, that was unexpected. I'm going to try to get some sleep, but I'm pretty rattled at the moment. It's morning. I made it through the night. The lady didn't come up to my window like I thought she was in my nightmares. <laughs> Look, I don't know what happened here in Southern Utah, but this town looks like it's really nice. It's like really nice and quaint and nothing looks like it ever happens here. I know that I'm definitely going to be driving straight to Colorado. I'm not going to make any detours. Probably will stop in Grand Junction and then Aspen. And the goal is to get to Fort Collins by Tuesday night. So Tuesday night, Fort Collins, my new home. What happened in Cedar City really shook me up. I had planned to head north to Wyoming to see the Grand Tetons, which are some of my favorite mountains, but something just didn't feel right. I just can't shake the feeling that I need to get to Fort Collins as quickly as possible to prepare for my upcoming classes. Wow, we've finally made it after all this way from California and this campus is just so beautiful. I'm really looking forward to starting classes here. Absolutely amazing.